Today on Knife Battle, we're carving this pumpkin. We're gonna figure out if a Japanese kitchen knife is the right tool for the job. As always, a sharp knife is a safe knife, so I think that's why it might be a good tool, but we're gonna check it out and see. All right, everybody, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a pumpkin carving expert here. Well, I think that scary is what Halloween's supposed to be about. I'm not on the side of sexy Halloween. I'm on scary Halloween team. So I pick a pumpkin that's kind of ugly. This isn't gonna be a great pumpkin carving lesson, but we're gonna jam some sharp knives in it and see what happens. All right, so we've got a selection, kind of a standard home kitchen knife selection. We've got a Honosuke, a Deba, a Petty, a Nakiri, Santoku, and a real wobbly bread knife. I got a couple theories here, and it's gonna be skinny is gonna be better, so is thinner. I'm thinking this Honosuke is gonna be interesting to try. It's got a nice bevel to it. This Haruyuki Goma Petty 135, it's actually one of my favorite knives to use at home. And I, I think that's gonna be kind of the best option. It's the skinniest. Deba, no. Nakiri, uh, no. Uh, Santoku, nah, maybe. And this little bread knife, I'll be honest, I've never tried to carve a pumpkin with a bread knife. I think it's a terrible idea. But that's what this is about. Let's rule out those terrible ideas. You never know what gem you're gonna stumble upon. Maybe it'll give the best effect look ever. So we're gonna start by marking out the face on our pumpkin. Then I'm gonna cut the top off, yank out all the seeds. I'm of course using my red knife or sharpie for the job. That was the easiest part right there. All right, let's draw an ugly face here. One eye here, one eye here. Oh look, it's gonna look like he's got a scar, like an evil villain, like someone slashed his eye. It needs a nose, like the two nose hole one, and then the mouth. Oh, it's starting to look real scary. Looks like a pumpkin. All right, step one cut top out. I told you this was a dumb idea. All right, let's try the Santogu. We got a tip here, this will work. Oh, but I can't really go in corners. I can't really curve this thing very well because, well, it's too, too wide. Wiggle, pull it out, put it in again. This is clearly the winner. I, I don't even know why we need to do this. This is obvious. But I'll play along with your fun video idea. Okay, Honosuke. This is pretty good. I mean, Honosuke is a pretty stiff knife, so I can push on it a little harder. It is kind of fat, though, so it jams up in there. I mean, it's meant to debone something. Not exactly deboning this pumpkin, are we? Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Okay, let's try the dumbest one in the heap here. It's just too fat. Why would I even try a Deva? Look at that. No, nope, not at all. Okay. Oh, all right. Doing, doing. No. Nah. Bust it. Give me my petty. I got this little bird's beak out of my drawer. Maybe this will work. <laughs> the only knives that work really well here, we got this 135 millimeter petty. It's uh, a little long, a little slender goes around the curves, it's solid, I can push on it. It's thick enough that it's, uh, I can push on it, but it's thin enough that it's not bendy, like this uh, this bread knife. That's a, that's a dumb idea, that's too bendy, you don't want that. Pumpkins are hard. You know what else works? This guy, this colored jelly bean colored petty knife, the Kuhn Rikon, these are great. You see these in chef's pockets on their sleeve of their shirt because it's got a really solid blade cover. Sometimes this is what you need. 
Maybe it's for carving a pumpkin. Maybe it's for your lunchbox at work. They're a great little thing to have. I'm gonna scoop this stuff out. Would you like to watch? What's your favorite Halloween movie, Mike? The Shining. That's my favorite Halloween movie. Because that thing is scary. What's your Halloween tradition? Turn off the lights and close the doors and go to someone else's house and avoid people knocking on my door. I gotta say this Masashi isn't great for stabbing into a pumpkin, but oh my god, this thing slices off that uh, pumpkin very nicely. Now it's time to carve out the eyes and the face of the pumpkin. So you can see I'm moving a knife and the edge is traveling towards my body. That's not good. Because what could happen if I push too hard, the knife will slide out and go right into me. So that's not a good idea. So what you want to do is turn the knife around and aim it away from you. So you can see if the edge, if I push too hard and the knife gives way, it's going to go into the cutting board and hurt the cutting board and hurt the knife. But that's a lot easier than having to go for stitches. You want a knife not traveling towards your body. The trick though is often your other hand. So you're trying to hold it like this, you push it in here, and you don't really think that your hand is in the way, but you gotta try and figure out a better way to do it. Sometimes you gotta turn things around, flip it over, get that grip that you need. So just take your time as you figure it out. You can move stuff around and uh, you'll be thankful for it. All right, thin little knife here. This is, this is the one I'm using. I'm not gonna bother using any of those other things anymore. Those are dumb. My eye! My eye! Okay, next eye, here we go. I'm just sort of wiggling it back and forth. That's helping it saw through. Because I, I want to have some control here. I'm not actually trying to make it go all the way through. I want it to stop at the corner. Oh yeah, that's the technique right there. Wiggle, wiggle. Three. Uh, we're gonna go back and play the game here. We're gonna try another knife. This Honosuke is pretty sweet knife, so we're gonna see how it does here. It's not gonna do great, I can tell you already. But ah, you know, it's not too bad. It's a pretty thin little edge. I think this would be great for chicken, you know, like what it's designed for. Uh, that's too big, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna grab this guy though. This is my sack of bone. This is a knife sometimes called Hanasuki Maru. This is a butchery knife. It's uh, got an unequal grind to it. It's not single bevel, but it's sharpened differently. It makes taking silver skin off of meat really easy. Uh, I used to use this a lot for cleaning tenons. Uh-oh, look what's happening. It's going towards my body. I have to change what I'm doing. Roll the pumpkin around. Now it's going away from me. Safer, better. Eh, I just picked his nose. All right, now we're gonna go into his mouth. Let's try, let's try this Kuhn paring knife again. They are, I think, $16. They're actually made out of that Japanese steel. They're very easy and, and we can resharpen these things when they get dull. Knife battle, the pumpkin edition. So far we're down to my Honosuke for butchery. Honosuke Maru, other, otherwise sometimes known as the Saka bone. It's nice because it's got a great tip to it and it slips through pretty easy. Okay, so we're down to these three here. This is a good old petty knife. This is a 135 millimeter petty knife. This is a really great knife to have in your kitchen for so many different things. Cutting a piece of cheese, slicing a cucumber because you're gonna stick it in hummus. If you just came home from shopping and you're starving, don't always wanna have to get out your big chef's knife, uh, which is great for other you going around popping out the teeth here, trying to keep spinning the pumpkin so I keep having the knife traveling away from me. Uh, I could do that, but that feels really weird on my wrist. That doesn't feel good either. Don't feel like I'm in control. I mean, if you're gonna be a control freak about something, it should be about using a knife and not cutting yourself, also known as knife safety. If you have any other techniques on how to carve a pumpkin, you can always drop your comments in the thing below, or maybe you got a favorite Japanese knife that you like using for carving pumpkins. Let us know what it is. Just gotta try and pop this guy out. Out come your teeth, bud. Urgh. Urgh. Gross. Big reveal time. Isn't that scary? This pumpkin has a hat. All right, everybody, 
Thanks for watching our pumpkin carving video. This is part of the series we like to call Knife versus Food. We take multiple knives and try and do one job. Today we carved a pumpkin and we found out some things that were pretty obvious. Like a nakiri is not a good knife for carving a pumpkin. Neither is a deba. But we like making zany videos here at Knifeware, so we even tried a bread knife. Also a complete loser. Now, what we did boil it down to was this size of a paring knife, or what we like to call a petty knife. You might call it a utility knife. This is the Haruyuki Goma, 135 millimeter long edge. This was pretty great. I use it for most of the job. I also found that the old $16 Kuhn Raikon paring knife uh, did a pretty decent job. Now, if you are carving a pumpkin yourself or with a kid, you want to be safe. So remember, Try to always have the knife being pushed away from you, not towards you or your hand, because it'll go in and then you'll have new special effects on your pumpkin. You can have blood coming out of it. You could just use your blood, which is kind of gross. And you probably don't want to do that. What I found was to move the pumpkin around as I was cutting so as to not have to move the knife towards me. I kept the knife going in the same direction and I moved the pumpkin. All right, we put a candle in here to see how it looks. I think, I think it's a little too bright out to be spooky. We might have to employ a filter, a special effect called nighttime to make this work. I'll turn the ISO down. You're a genius. It didn't work. You're not a genius. All right, thanks for watching everybody. That was the Knife Battle Pumpkin Edition. If you're gonna reach for a knife out of your kitchen, set up a knives to carve a pumpkin, I'm gonna go with Petty Knife. Or if you're in the neighborhood of your local knifeware, pop in, grab one of these. Little Kuhn Rikon Petties, they're pretty cheap, they're quite good, and uh, it'll get the job done. You wanna watch something really scary? Check out this next video about how to chip your Japanese kitchen knife. Nothing but danger.